All right, what's going on, family? I want to say good morning to you as we give the most high y'all the honor, the glory, and all praise and worship. So blessed to see another day. My title says, Sinning After You Are Saved. The sins that happen after you are saved. Now, I'm prayed up, and I know that off this title alone, a um, few people are not going to understand it. Because we've been taught, you know, so wrong growing up, lost, and I mean this out of love. Uh, and I'm responding back to quite a few emails about why is it I still sin after I'm saved. Now, let me clear this up because I know this title may sound confusing to, you know, a few people. Notice I didn't put in there willfully sinning. I'm going to say it again. I didn't put in there willfully sinning. See, one thing that a lot of preachers don't teach you, and I'm, I notice I said a lot, but not all preachers, is that your flesh is not saved. Flesh is not saved. And the Bible is clear on the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, let me explain this a little bit more. There is a constant fight. You fight with yourself. You fight with this world. You fight with the devil. And the reason why so many people can't figure out why am I still doing this? Because you haven't realized that it's the spiritual battle. I don't care how saved you think you are. I don't care how good you speak in tongues. I don't care how many days out of the week you go to church. I don't care how many times you pray. I don't care how much you give from your heart. You still are in this spiritual battle. Now, what do you mean by this, JT? You're going to fall. But see, the most high is not shocked when we fall. But what the Holy Spirit wants to see us do is repent. Teach Holy Spirit. Repent is what restores us. But that unrepentant and that willfully sinning, you ain't saved. See, you know how you are on the right track. Y'all already know this. But I'm going to remind you if you have forgotten. The difference between when you was worldly and you say is that you fighting. And when I say you fighting, it's really the Holy Spirit fighting for you. But remember when you was lost and then you was doing what you wanted to do? You didn't put up no fight. You gave in. See, the devil is not walking around here, going around trying to get people that he already got. He wants the ones that say they believe us. He wants the ones that say they Christians. He wants the ones that say they Israel. He wants the ones who are born again. Not the ones that he already got. He ain't spending time on the, the, the blinded. Uh, uh, he, the Bible says he has blinded the minds of the unbeliever. He not wasting time on people that ain't no threat to his kingdom. It's you and I. So yes, you're going to Hell, you're going to miss the mark at times after you saved because you are not perfect. You are not in a glorified body yet. Not that, you, not, not that you're trying to willfully sin, but immediately when you notice it, you be like, oh, man, I got to repent, Father. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to grieve the Holy Spirit. I didn't mean to follow. I, I am repenting. I'm confessing. That's I got out of my character today. I, I, I got outside of you today, Father. You have to be like David, creating me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me, Father. And once again, I'm not talking about will for this sin. See, this is, I'm about to get a little bit real in here. It's a lot of people in Christianity. I like to use Christianity a lot because Christianity is one of the biggest, the biggest talked about. 
But you wonder why in most of the churches, notice I didn't say all, especially in the music department, why is it that it's being more and more men feminine? Why is it being more and more men gay? Why is it more and more pastors not talking about it? Why is they not addressing sin? Why is that? The focus is off. You, you, you keep talking about building the church, but you're not talking about really building the body. You're talking about building your building. And, and the way you build that building is to get that music in there. And you're not even worried about who's over it. And I mean this out of love. You just happen to be a homosexual looking at the video. I love you, but I don't like it. And I tell you the truth because I love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. And if you get mad at that, take it over with the Holy Spirit. But they are not delivered. It ain't just homosexuality. It's a lot of people in leadership. There's a lot of people in positions. They are not convicted because they are still willfully sinning. And that right there is an abomination. When you willfully sin, there is no way the Holy Spirit is going to bless you. You're not ready for it. The devil will bless you. I hear so many people say, oh man, that, that brother so anointed, that sister so anointed, oh man, God is well pleased, and it ain't nowhere close to the Father. Because that willfully sin and that not repenting, what did the Bible tells us? The Most High separates itself from sin. He don't want no part of it. He cannot sin. We do. He cannot lie. We do. He cannot go back on his covenant. We do. He cannot be a part of idolatry. He cannot put himself around it. He had to turn his back on his own son. In a good way. Because he looked at the sin that Yahshua was carrying. Teach Holy Spirit. Yahshua said, why? Father, why have thou forsaken me? He did not want to go to the cross, but he did it being obedient to his father's will. Take this cup away from me. Not my will, but let your will be done. Why is it we don't say that same thing? I ain't talking about everybody. It's not his will for you to be a homosexual, a drunk, a liar, a cheat, full of idolatry, full of witchcraft, full of lies. Full of the abomination. It's not his will for that. That's the devil's will. So once again, yes, even after you save, you're going to miss the mark at times. Not that you're trying to. It's just your flesh gives out. I didn't say you gave up. You may give out, but not give up. There is no way in hell that we can whoop the devil on our own. Oh, but what's inside of us? See, with my own strength, I don't care how strong I think I am. I'm no match for the devil without the Holy Spirit. And that's why this battle, once again, Ephesians 6 and 12, 11, it teaches us that this battle is not against flesh and blood. Rulers of darkness, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why those demons are, are, are going to continue to try to get at you. Get inside your body when you give them an invite. That invitation is all they need and then here they come. And you sit up here trying to fight on your own. No. Y'all know I love the Holy Spirit. I love the most time. I love Yahshua. I love, I love I can't even explain it how deep I love my Heavenly Father. See, the old me wouldn't put up no fight. But that's when I was lost and I didn't know who and what the Holy Spirit was. I was lost. I was trying to seek Him through traditions of men. I was listening at the broke down preachers that wasn't talking about nothing. 
I thought I was on my way to heaven and I was on my way to the lake of fire. Oh, but now that I know better, I hope I'm helping somebody. There are times when you are married, especially, there are things that go on in your marriage. You may say the wrong thing. You got to get it back right with each other. Because see, Satan is always trying to attack, trying to attack, excuse me, the covenant. He don't want to see no man and woman that's that's under Yah. No, he don't want that together. His job is to break that up. But see, I've learned that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He didn't say that it wasn't going to prosper. See, some of y'all are letting Satan's weapons prosper. Ooh, mm. Ooh, that's a whole nother video. Ooh, teach on the spirit. Did y'all catch that? Somebody ain't gonna understand that, but somebody will. Some of y'all are letting Satan's weapon prosper. He told us, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. What do you mean by letting it prosper, JT? He's throwing those fiery darts. He's the prince of the power of the earth. But if you let him win, it prospered. Give me an example, JT, what you're talking about. If you say you was following the Holy Spirit and your husband or wife, vice versa, was sent by the Holy Spirit, all that y'all went through, if, notice I'm saying if, that was said about the Holy Spirit, and you, you allowed all the stuff you went to for you to get divorced, his weapon prospered on you. It formed and it prospered. And I'm not saying that to dis disrespect nobody that got divorced. I'm just giving you an example if it was sent by the Holy Spirit. Because y'all say what he put together, nobody can break up. I don't care what me and my wife go through. And we done went through some ups and downs and gonna go through some more. But the more and more I go through with her, the more I love her even more. The more I, I love the Holy Spirit even more. And I say, baby, let's pray. See, it's a beautiful thing when you don't want a card and you got the right one sent to you. But these weapons are farming. And some of y'all, once again, are letting them prosper. See, it's only a few people going to catch that. You will fall. I'm not speaking bad on you. I'm speaking what the Bible is showing us. It rains on the just as well as the unjust. See, these, these oh, how do you put this together, Holy Spirit? Mm. The, the, when you are falling and in in, in, in not willfully sinning and you repent, once again, they just let you know you in the fight. You in the fight and you ain't tapped out. When you are fighting, that lets the Holy Spirit know that you are fighting. You are doing way better than you used to. So don't let this title confuse you in. And some of y'all that like to just look at the title and don't hear the message, you're going to miss it if you don't listen to the message. Because I don't know a man or a woman walking around here that say they saved and they ain't going through a whole lot. And the biggest thing they're going through is with themselves. With well, JT, all the teaching and praying that you do, man, and, and singing and being in ministry inside the building and out of the building, and the women's shelter out, out here when you be talking and ministering on these streets. Yeah, me too. I talk to myself first. It goes for me too. JT go through a lot. And when I miss the mark, I fall, I say, Father, forgive me. I said the wrong thing today. I did the wrong thing today. I didn't mean to hurt you. See, we don't just be hurting ourselves. We got children looking up to us. We got certain kin folks looking up to us. We got people in general that, that's, that's, that's just looking up to us 
and, and using us as an example. And then you got the ones that just waiting to see you fall. They can't wait until they can say, I told you JT wasn't about nothing. I told you Brother Rodney wasn't about nothing. I told you James wasn't about nothing. I told you Rain wasn't about nothing. I told you Sir Michael wasn't about nothing. I told you Auntie Pam wasn't about nothing. I told you Mama JT wasn't about nothing. People are waiting on that. But the ones who truly confess and repent and are truly born again, you understand this message. You truly understand this message here. Because once again, this message is not going to be for everybody. Because somebody, once again, are going to look at the title and be like, that is a confusing title. But see, it's the reason why he said, call no man good but the Father. It's the reason why Paul, teach Holy Spirit, recognize that thorn in his flesh. Every last one of us got a thorn in our flesh. It's a reminder. Mm. But see, my thorn in my flesh keeps me intact with the Holy Spirit because I, every time I think about my thorns in my flesh, I realize I got something greater. Because he, he told me the same thing. My grace is what? I'm going to let y'all finish that in the comment section. My grace is, and that's all I need to hear. And with that being said, I love you. Y'all take care. Thank you for everything you do on her. Appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. Shalom.